Hello and welcome to the next installment on Old Testament history. And again, we're not going to talk a whole lot about dates and events. Uh, this is basically tracing the history of the promise that God made in the Garden of Eden all the way through to its fulfillment uh, by Jesus when he stood up in the synagogue at Nazareth where he grew up, read from the prophet Isaiah, and looked at the individuals there and said, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So today we're going to look at Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, again, depending on uh, what you count as messianic, has eight, eight or nine different uh, messianic prophecies. But tonight we're just going to look at three of them. It's going to be a, a rather short lesson tonight because I decided that uh, we'll deal with uh, Daniel next week by itself. And then probably the week after that we will look at Ezekiel. And we'll also have a special treat on that because Ken Schmidt has a short video on, on Ezekiel for us. But tonight we're going to look at Jeremiah. And again, Jeremiah prophesied uh, from the days of Josiah the king all the way through to the captivity of the city of Jerusalem. So a period of 60 to 70 years in, in which he prophesied. Uh, the first one that we're going to look at is in chapter 23, beginning in verse 5, where he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. So again, a, a reference there uh, to David and rising up a, uh, raising up a righteous branch. Then over in chapter 31, again, a very familiar passage of Scripture uh, where Jeremiah says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declare the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. And, and in this passage, he makes reference to a covenant. He's going to make a new covenant, not like the covenant that we made, uh, that he made with their fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And again, that's a reference to the covenant that God spoke to Moses there at Mount Sinai. Moses read it to the people, and the people all said, all that the Lord has said, we will do and we will be obedient. And that day they entered into that covenant with God. Again, which they broke. And it didn't take them very long to break it. And so Jeremiah says uh, that God says there's going to be a new covenant made. And it's not going to be like the one uh, that he made with their fathers when he had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And then again, over in chapter 33, beginning in verse, verse 14, Jeremiah says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. Again, very, very similar prophecy to the one that we read first. And again, while Jesus is not mentioned by name, and Jeremiah doesn't call him the Messiah, he refers to that promise that was first mentioned in the Garden of Eden and then given to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, and the succeeding generations. And so Jeremiah, again, doesn't refer to the Messiah directly. But if you know your Old Testament history, we know what he is talking about. And then again, when Jesus stands up there in the synagogue uh, in Nazareth and says, today this promise has been fulfilled in your hearing, they should have known what he was talking about. 
Well, I hope you have a great week, and I, let me encourage you to read uh, the prophet Daniel. It's not that long, uh, but again, there's a lot of things in there that reference the Messiah. Well, I pray you'll have a great week.